We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content control. is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. First guest of 2022. And we can't think of anyone better to start the content is profit year with. You've heard us say your business grows to the extent that you do well. I hope you are ready to do some growing. <laughs> that is right. Today's guest is a resilience and reinvention thought leader. He's the best selling author of the book, Pivot. And this was way before started talking about pivoting these last two years. Uh, he's also <laughs> currently publishing his new book, Change Proof. And he has also been featured in Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, Wall Street Journal, and many other big publications that you probably read. <laughs> that is right. I hope you're ready to reinvent yourself this year. Please welcome the one and only Adam Marco. <laughs> you guys rock. That's Thank awesome. you, Adam. Seriously. I, I, I'm just going to say this. I know I, I told you this already like three times behind the scenes, but <laughs> I'm just so pumped up after watching the video on your website. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. It's, you know what? It's doing its job, right? I, absolutely. I want to invite everybody that is listening to this or watching right now to go to Adam's website. It's adammarkle.com, right? Correct. And watch that video right there on the homepage. I'm telling you, you are, you, you're going to feel like you're ready to conquer the world, ready to conquer 2022. Let's go. That. <laughs> well, you got to, you got to hook people's, I mean, it's like business 101 these days. You have only a short amount of time to be able to grab somebody's attention, hopefully be able to hold their attention long enough to, you know, see if there's, if there's a, you know, a, uh, uh, something simpatico, like there's something you can relate to. And so I think we've gotten good feedback about that video for this, you know, the reasons that it, it, it accomplishes some of that. And that's yeah. like, that I want to say is like version 25 or something. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to lead anybody on to think, you know, you just create something uh, that's effective in the first instance. Sometimes, you know, you can mm -hmm. have a one hit wonder, but I don't know you guys, uh, I'll ask you guys a question when it comes to, you know, sure. good marketing, often it's, it's a, an iteration, pro, an iterative process that, you know, sometimes yeah. takes you 20 or 30 versions of something before, you know, you figure out what works. At least that's been my experience. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we're big fans of it. You know, when we launched the show, I mean, this is what episode two hundred and thirty-three, right? At, we're we're almost at your level, and uh, <laughs> and uh, every single show is a new duration, right? Like after the show, we sit down and we're like, hey, why can we modify? Why can't evolve? What what works? And I think with that, uh, business-wise and content-wise, it's uh, it's imperative that that we take a look at that. So thank you for that strong start, Adam. For those that might not be very familiar with you. Like, tell us a little bit about your beginnings. Like, what, like, what led you to what Change Proof is now? Like, what was that like spark? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. I'm gonna, I'm answering this question for like the thousandth time. Um, it not, not the exact question you just put out, Luis, but, um, you know, my story, it's, it, it, I could start in a bunch of places, but I'm gonna start with a, a point in time in my life when, when I used to begin. Uh, the day in a particular way. And, and I'm saying it, I'm going to start here because I think this is something that a lot of people can um, relate to in the times that we're living in. Yeah. Putting my feet on the floor. So I ask you guys, have you ever started your day by putting your feet on the floor? I hope barefoot. <laughs> yeah. Are we talking about like it's a trick question, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? As opposed to you know the rest of us out there that levitate to start the day. Well, <laughs> oh, okay, you know, okay, okay. The, the I do basic... jump to my alarm clock because if it goes past the third ring, then my wife kills me. So I do. Yeah. I think I'm very close to levitating at this point. Uh... <laughs> I I wasn't familiar. Let call it like. 12 years ago with this process of, you know, five, four, three, two, one feet on the floor, get up, get going mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, for me, the, the waking ritual, if you will, the, the habit of, of, of waking 
uh, and how I would wake up was 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 difficult. Um, I was a lawyer back then. Part of my history is is uh, having met my uh, my wife uh, in college. We were college sweethearts. We're married a long time. We have four uh, beautiful, healthy kids. Knock on on wood and all that. Um, and and I was a lawyer at this time in my life when I was having trouble waking up in the morning. And and by trouble, I mean the first feelings of the day, the first thoughts of the day were kind of anxious thoughts, uh, feeling uh, like heaviness, even even uh, a sense of dread about the day ahead. And I put my feet on the floor and that's when I would feel that. I would feel this urge to, you know, like maybe I wasn't ready to get up at all, maybe get back in bed or um, just feeling like there was so much that I, I, that was out of my control. And I kind of felt out of control, even yeah. though I was by everybody else's sort of definition, I suppose, really successful. I had my own law practice in, uh, in two, uh, in two States in New York and in New Jersey and Manhattan and, and out in the suburbs where we were living and plenty of money and all the, all the accoutrements of wealth, you know, cars and houses and, and, uh, and four healthy kids and two big dogs and gerbils and goldfish and a lot of, a lot of responsibility, you know, for living, yeah. living things. Um, and I would start the day and I would feel this and I didn't know what to do with that. I had no, um, I had no understanding of w what it meant and no real self-awareness other than it kind of sucked, mm -hmm. but you know, I was a big boy. I had responsibilities. I got up finally, you know, got in the shower, got a cup of coffee and, and just made my way into the into the day, into the world, like a lot of us, I think, are doing. Um, but that uncertainty and and that lack of of feeling in control, uh, you know, I ignored it for a long time, and and then at one point, I just couldn't ignore it anymore. I, it was a Saturday morning. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was supposed to be at my son's baseball game, and instead, I was lying on a on a gurney in the emergency room at our local hospital. And sweating profusely, um, my heart beating so hard, it felt like I was on the outside of my chest. My fingers were tingling. I could still even kind of think, feel that feeling now, viscerally now, as I'm, I'm describing it to you. And, um, and my wife was standing next to me with a look on her face that was just told the story. She was so terrified. And, and I was terrified. I thought, I'm never going to see my kids again. Like, I won't mm. see them this afternoon. Um, and I'm, and, and oddly enough in that situation, I was angry as well. I was really kind of an, an angeraholic at that time anyway. And I was so pissed at myself for, for being there, for having been weak or whatever to just end up in that spot and, and have mm -hmm. my wife be standing there worrying about me. Um, and then just within a, a little while, you know, seemed like an eternity, but it wasn't very long. Doctor came in and, you know, I had all these electrodes that were stuck to my chest. And he said, we've read your, you know, EKG or whatever. And um, you're not having a heart attack. You're going to be okay. At which point, <laughs> man, I just like started to cry. And mm -hmm. my wife starts to cry. And it was just like, um, you know, one of these surreal moments. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you know, your heart's fine, but your life... <laughs> You know, there, there's something else going on. And, um, you know, we had a little talk and he asked me about things going on. But he said to me, you're having an anxiety attack. That's what this yeah. is. You're not having a heart attack. You're having a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And and that was, uh, you know, I didn't know what to do with it other than in the moment to be grateful because I yeah. wasn't I was going to get to see my kids that afternoon. I left the hospital. I looked up at the sky and I said, thank you. I said, thank you, God, is what I said. Um, and that wasn't like a language for me at the time. And and I got that second chance. At least that's how it felt to me, like I was given a reprieve. Um, so my road to where I am now, which is there's a number of things that we can cover there, um, and, and ultimately writing the book Pivot, as you mentioned in the introduction, uh, a book about reinvention, personal and career reinvention, started that day in, in the emergency room where, where I had a reality check about mm. the, the wall that, that I was headed toward in my life. And, um, and thankfully for me, it, that worked out 
that day. You know, a lot yeah. of, a lot of people don't walk out of that hospital that day. That's what the doctor told me. And I believed him. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah. I mean, we've, we've had similar conversations with other people. We've, Fortunately, we haven't reached a point like that in our in our lives and maybe in our business. And because of these conversations and the, the, the relationships that we've been able to develop, right, we, we're putting pieces in place so that doesn't happen, right? Uh, but it seems to be somewhat of a common occurrence where it's that big episode that somebody is going through to create this massive change. And, you know, over the last conversations that we've had over the, at the end of the year, like internally for our company, with our team, different things, right? Like, uh, there's been situations inside of the business where it's like, it feels that way. Right. And we're like, okay, is this a cycle? Are we growing? Is this where we're reaching? Like I was stretching, but, uh, as an entrepreneur and people that might be out there that are, might not be happy with their current situation, right? Whether call it job, call it business, call it, uh, college, right? Is it necessary to go through this episode to wake up? Like, for example, for, for, for me, I just had an episode in my private life where I was with no car for two weeks. Right. And the first uh, hashtag first world problems, right? Like this is, we're coming sure. from a third world country from Venezuela. We migrated, we've been here for 10 years. we worked really hard for everything that, 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 that we have, but on, we're in a very fortunate position in the place that we live. But something like this happens and, you know, the license gets taken away, right? There's no insurance and it, it, and, it, and all of a sudden, like the entire world seems very fragile because of this very trivial thing, right? I'm like, okay, this situation triggered a bunch of emotional responses from me, from my family, and, and put everybody in very, uh, very difficult situations. And that was a very, you know, top of funnel kind of like surface thing. But then... You have an experience like yours, for example, that is very deep and very hard on your family, I'm sure, and yourself to create this massive change, right? So you're like, okay, do we have, is this a trend? Do we actually have to go through these changes to, to or, or experiences to trigger change? Uh, or can we prevent that and still cause positive change in our lives? Oh, did we? Did, did we lose you? Did you miss the question or? I think I missed the question there. Yeah. Oh, I think <laughs> I just, just the last little bit. I got yeah, everything. Yeah. Into that. yeah. I think is it the Wi-Fi kind of like, like a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so <laughs> the, the, the question is like, do we actually have to go through these situations to trigger change within ourselves? Right. Or can we prevent it? Uh, can we prevent the situations and still cause that positive change? That's, I mean, it's a great question, Louise. I, I mean, uh, to me, and you started this out by saying that everything happens for a reason. Uh, you know, I was never really happy with that person, that statement personally, um, because I, part of me, maybe it's the child part of me would say, well, you know, what's the reason, like, <laughs> you know, to just sort of look at everything and go, everything happens for a reason. That's, you know, what's, what's, what's the reason there's so much suffering and there's so many things that, that, mm. you know, feel unnecessary. Uh, that mm -hmm. we go through, et cetera. And then I, I sort of had this uh, moment of, of awareness where it, it's not just that everything happens for a reason, but that there's missing something missing from that statement. And that's mm -hmm. a comma and, and something comes after it, which is that, and that reason is there to serve. Everything mm -hmm. happens for a reason, comma, not period. And every, and, and that reason is there to serve. So I know that my philosophy, and I think so much of our life uh, whether it's in our business lives or in our personal lives is just the, the outpicturing of our philosophies, the deep rooted philosophies that we hold. And, and I am a net positive person. Um, I, I like to see everything, especially change as, mm -hmm. as net positive by that. I mean that if you, you were to look into the future, the future would teach us and always teaches us the same thing. The future has great wisdom yeah. if we look at it. And the future will always tell us that everything that's happening in the present is net positive. Just look yeah. back at your life. The fact that you're here today, you can look back five years ago, five minutes ago, you know, whatever length of time, something that you were, you were worried about, something that was causing you stress, something causing you anxiety, something, you know, that was a big deal, like a catastrophe, or you made a catastrophe out of it, you know, whenever that was, you look back on that and go, what did I learn? What, mm -hmm. what, what growth occurred? Where, how did mm -hmm. I get here from there? 
And, yeah. and you know that what you learned is that it was that that situation at the time was net positive. You just didn't know it at the moment. You weren't looking at it that way at the moment. And so, yeah, when, when things happen, there's a way for it to help for us to serve in some way in, in our lives and in, in the lives of others as well. So, you know, do we have to suffer in order to learn, I think is the question. And, and my answer is no. I think suffering is optional. Suffering is, is something that, that we, we choose to do. And if we choose to take the path of suffering, there's great learning that comes from that. There's great growth that comes from that. If we choose not to take the path of suffering, I think there's also something really positive that, that flows out of that as well. But it's choice. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. So first of all, I relate a lot with what you talk about getting out of bed, right? And before... We started the conversation. We mentioned that we went to George Bryan's event, who's the one that you know uh, recommended you to be on the on the podcast. And I remember a very specific phrase that he said. He was, "If you are hitting this news button, you are lying to yourself first thing in the morning, right? Because you say this is when I'm going to get up, and then you're like, nope, news. I'm going back to sleep. And that just hit me like." a boxer, like a jab and then a right hook. I was like, oh man, I do that all the time. I'm, I'm hitting snooze a lot. And you know, when I ask myself, why is that pressure? Right. It's like, oh man, like there's so many things going on in life right now and so many challenges and it's just tough to get out of bed. Right. It's like, do I want to go out there, put my feet on the ground and face all those challenges head on. Right. And yeah. You know, I do. I love that we're going to get into resiliency because I, I think that obviously goes in there and there's probably a message in there that I need to hear. Um, but before we get into that, right, like you were talking about it's an option. It's optional to suffer. Right. And I was I would say lately stoic stoicism, you know, the stoics, the philosopher, uh, have been, uh, I'll, I'll say like a, a rising hot topic with like Ryan Holiday that's, you know, talking a lot about it and the books that, that he's written. And I was actually reading The Daily Stoic this morning. <laughs> and it, it, it talks about you, I mean, the, the three virtues of the Stoics is you control your perception, uh, taking action for the common good, right? And the will to pretty much determine what you can't and what you can control. That being said, I started reflecting a little bit. I'm like, there are things that I know I can control yet. It is so difficult. There's so much resistance that I'm probably putting on myself to actually make that change. Right. And I'm curious, like what have you seen throughout your years of helping people, right. And helping companies move through those moments. Like what is it that holds people back? I mean, some people would say it's fear of failure. Some other people might say it's fear, fear of success, lack of confidence. Like, I'm sure there are plenty of reasons and it, they might be different for everybody, right? I got to look inside and reflect on all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious, based on your experience, right? What is that is holding people to make the right choice, even when they know they have that choice, right? Like... I personally consider myself that I'm pretty good at distinguishing those scenarios of the things I cannot control and the things I can control. Yet sometimes I feel like I like the energy to, let's say, take the right action at that moment. Right. Uh, Fonzie, thank you. I'm, I want to start. I want to start with the answer to the question, which is the what's what's the thing in business and in and in uh, other areas of our lives that gets in the way. And it's poor decision making. So the 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 premise that I go by is that our the the quality of our lives are equal to the quality of the decisions that we've made thus far. Like you take a look at anything that's, that's happening in your life right now, it is it is the the collection of decisions that you've made before now that have led to everything that's occurring in your life this moment. So that being said, decision making is is fundamentally important, mm -hmm. and the way that we make decisions is based on thinking. So it's right thinking that leads to right decision making that read that 
leads to right activity or right action taking in our lives and that produces everything that's around us. So if that's sort of the, the series of dominoes, you got to go to the first domino that when I work with organizations, leaders, you know, teams, et cetera, I always am looking for what's the, what's the first domino. And in this instance, the first domino is how it is that we think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that will bring us back to this kind of concept, the stoic uh, choices that you were bringing up. And the one I, I would, I would focus on the one that I, I think about a lot and I speak about a lot is, is the, this ability to make to, to think rightly in the moment. So my, my, my philosophy back to that is that we, we only need to get this moment right, that our only responsibility in life, I know I'm going to chunk down a lot of stuff into one tiny little, <laughs> you know, head of the tip of the spear, but the only responsibility we truly have is to get this moment right. Mm. And, and the one freedom the single freedom that we all have, regardless of our circumstances, whether we are uh, living in any situation under any regime, uh, with or without uh, money or other resources, we have one fundamental freedom that we all share as human beings, and that is the ability to choose how we experience this moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I call that the Nelson Mandela choice, um, simply because if you could imagine uh, being in his situation and being locked in a in in a cell in prison for 27 or 28 years, you know it's a miracle that he could come out of that, that he could survive it, that he would be yeah. alive in the end. Uh, but ultimately, as we know, his story is is such a uh, it's just it's miraculous to be able to come out of that and then lead a and then lead a nation as well. Um, it's because his freedom to think, his freedom to to experience the moment how he chose to experience it could not be taken from him it, they could lock him in a cell like we you know whether we're physically imprisoned or whether we're emotionally imprisoned or mentally imprisoned you know yeah, so yeah. many of us are living in a prison of our own making and mm -hmm. we all have the key now nelson mandela couldn't just turn the key and physically walk out of that out of that prison uh, but the but his his captors couldn't steal from him his ability to think, to fundamentally choose for himself how he wished to experience that moment, those moments, the, the collective yeah. of those moments over so many years. And I believe not having you know spoken to him personally or or um, can't know I can't know what went on inside his head. I just my my own uh, way of looking at it is that he, he retained that freedom and that's what enabled him to, to uh, look beyond the bars, look beyond his imprisonment and ultimately uh, be emancipated and ultimately lead as he did afterward and inspire uh, people for, for many, many, many generations. Yeah. By his example, that's a freedom nobody can take from you. That's mm. a freedom you were born with. It is a, 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 a birthright that we all have. And, yeah. people, and people abdicate it and people uh, not only abdicate it, but they, they don't actually take advantage of it. There's a, there's a, a, a thing that Napoleon Hill said many, many years ago that I read, um, which is that I ask this, these are Napoleon Hill's words. I ask not, oh, divine providence for more riches, but more wisdom with which to accept and use wisely the riches I received at birth in the form of power to control and direct my mind to mm. whatever I desire. Yeah. And, and that's the fundamental freedom that we all have that no one can take from us, but that people don't utilize fully. Yeah. Uh, th 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 be before uh, you go there real quick. I, do you I'm know just, where I'm going to go? No, I have no <laughs> idea. But <laughs> I just want to add a little, you know, uh, thing in there in the conversation. I am just surpri so surprised of how... I'm just going to call it the universe, how the universe put things in front on the, at the right time, right on the, and I'm saying this because this morning, um, a friend, actually a friend that we met at George's event, you remember Seth, he's mm -hmm. like nine feet tall. Yeah. Uh, he has this <laughs> challenge called breakthrough challenge, right? And 
for New Year, he's like, he sent an email, like, hey, you want to participate? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll like, I'll do it. It sounds awesome, right? Uh, his his sales letter really captivated me. He talks about the almost life, which is, I almost did that. I almost did this, right? It, it resonated a lot. So I was like, yeah, I want to do your challenge. And he sent an email this morning where uh, he talked about commitment and choice, right? And you're talking about choice right now. And these words I just wrote exactly from that email. Commitment is not cheap. Committed choice. It can save your life as easily as it can change it, right? And I, I think it's crazy how literally the same day that we're having you in here today, right? Talking about choice, those messages are like, put in, in, in front of me as well. So yeah. definitely something that I'm going to reflect on tonight as, yeah. the, as the end of my day comes by. I'm going to reflect on choice and, you know, how can I, and we can probably dig deeper into this right now, but I, how can we, you know, make sure we are strong enough to make those right choices? Just like you said, right? Um, it, well, the only responsibility we have is to make this choice right. And I think get, it's a, to get this moment right. Oh, to get this moment right. I'm yeah. definitely going to update the quote right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it's absolutely amazing. So, sorry, that's that's what I wanted to oh, add that, before I lost no, that idea. I mean, that's good. It, yeah, mine is just going to be like a comma and continue that. But it's like <laughs> it, it removes uh, it removes the friction, right? Like uh, and uh, it it removes the pressure. To a lot of people, I think like as you yeah. were explaining this, I'm like, huh, because you know, we it's so easy to go into and project something into the future that could be negative, right? And then we're worrying about the things that have never happened, <laughs> or also to do about what happened in the past, right? Like, you know, we we can go about like what happened in Venezuela that led us here. There were crazy things that when we tell the story, most people here in the states don't believe us, <laughs> but it's like, okay, I'm not doing like again, it happened because we're here to, because of the service and the things and, and and now we appreciate that moment but at the same time it's like okay can we remove the, the 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 pressure from those like two scenarios one that happened and we can't do anything about it the other one hasn't happened yet right and i can control the outcome by the decision that i'm making today by the decision i'm making in this very moment like living in the in, in the now so i think it just removes a lot of pressure as you were talking to this i'm like huh this is great. I'm going to actually going to put it in front of my desk, right? To where like, this is a massive indicator when that happens. Right. And, and I relate a lot because we talk to a lot of people that have to be in front of a camera, have never been in front of a camera. For example, uh, we do a, a challenge that's called the 45 live. So people going live for 45 days in a row for us that remove that friction of like, Hey, I'm going to be in here. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to go through that fear. I'm going to go do it. Right. And that originated this show, for example, and he saved the business ultimately. So I'm like, okay, I just need to focus on what is my decision today, right now in this very, very moment. And I think on the publishing world and the content world, that is so, so valuable, right? Because just this morning I was talking to a network of fitness studios and we're talking about, they wanna build a podcast show for all the coaches. And we've worked with this specific client before two years ago, and there was a lot of friction when it came to recording because of those fears. Like, well, what if I say this and what if, this member or these people, they, they, they react this way. Well, it hasn't happened yet, right? And then we had a very specific episode where they said something was highly polarizing. This one video go crazy viral, right? People in the studio were defending them. Two people were, you know, batching the video. And we're like, the people in your studio are defending you, right? Like, and these two people that are against that video, they're not members because of a reason. So why do we worry about these things, right? And it's, uh, I think in this content world that has a, so much value and we've applied it, I feel like in the content side of things with these shows, for example, but on our, in our private life, in the business side, I think there's still a lot of work to do. So I appreciate you so much for bringing that into our world. And I'm sure the listener right now is probably thinking something similar because they're probably in a similar situation. So thank you. Yeah, Louise, Fonzie, Louise, thank you. I, I think there's a, a lot of places where these things just become really tangible. You know, if I'm if I'm mentoring a, an executive in a business, a CEO or some senior leaders, you know, we're, we're looking at how it is that people make decisions. Again, this the first domino in the decision making is the thinking. So it's the right mm -hmm. thinking that produces a right decision that leads to right action and then there are results, right? That's just the sort of the, the if then 
analysis logic right i was a lawyer for 18 years so i i yeah. tend to move back to to some <laughs> of that um in in the, in the first instance but you know our company we work uh in in the communication field as well we're a media company so we train people to speak we train people to keynote mm. or to deliver ted talks and people have a lot of fear often around that about as you're saying around public speaking whether it's interviewing someone else on a podcast mm -hmm. being interviewed or standing on a stage or what have you and and their their thinking in the moment is so vital because in the moment if you're terrified in the moment if you're in your head as we like to say not in your heart mm -hmm. what what comes next is uh will either be the right you know be in the moment right result or or it won't be and we have that fundamental freedom repeatedly. And so I, I really appreciate you saying that this is not a, it's not complicated on some level. It's so easy that it's almost like, well, you know, what's the catch? If all I have to do is just get this moment, right. I'm not worried about the last moment. I'm not thinking about the next moment, but I'm getting this moment, right. Again, that's, that's like the first domino. It, and, it, and it's powerful. And it, I want to I want to close the loop too on um, or continue, not even close the loop. But you know, <laughs> so I I end up in that in that emergency room on the gurney. You know, it's like, what do I do after that? I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, it it took me uh, sort of six months of just sort of wandering around, a little a little dizzied from that experience. Yeah, I started I started reading some books. I'm a powerful. Uh, believer in the you know in the value of a book like this is the book that comes out drops yeah let's in, go in February called Change Proof, uh, which is a deep deep dive follow up to to pivot, um, but I read the Road Less Traveled, which was M Scott Peck, Doctor M Scott Peck. I mean a phenomenal book. It's sold millions and millions of copies. I just gave a co I gave my copy the one that I read at this very challenging time in my life to our youngest daughter uh, who's just traveled overseas actually yesterday to go, uh, to go study abroad. And, um, and she was having some just, you know, things that are going on in her mind and some anxiety about some stuff. And so I gave her that book and she's been devouring it. Um, so a book is, is phenomenally, you know, a powerful, uh, tool. And, um, and so at this time of my life, I began reading, but it's still, it's, I was still confused and, and, and having trouble sleeping. So I told you my waking, waking was difficult. I mean, have you ever had trouble getting to sleep at night? Have you had trouble staying asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, can't get back to sleep? I mean, I think right now, anybody listening to this, my guess is 80% of the folks are yeah. going, yeah, that's me, right? I, you know, take, you know, something to get to sleep or whatever it was. And at this point in my life, I, uh, you know, I, I was in that phase and I got up one night and did typically what I would do. I'd turn on the TV or something like that. And this movie came on that I'd seen when it first came out, which I think was in 1994. But I saw this movie. You guys ever see the movie Jerry Maguire? Yes, I have not. Know? I have. All right. So so Fonzie hasn't seen it. Fon so Louise, should oh, Fonzie see that movie? <laughs> do I? Should, should Fonzie see that movie? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's like, like a classic so uh, louise what are some of the lines from that movie do you remember some of the oh, no, no, for, don't even go there like i can't even repeat like the lines. show, like, show me what show me the what yeah it says it's, it's, uh no it's not show, it's a show show me the money no show me the money that's show it the money, yeah. show me the money that's yeah. what, right um cuba gooding says right um and it's with tom cruise and uh you know there's uh you had me at hello there's that moment yeah, right yeah. or uh you complete me that's a funny little story where I, I'll, I asked my wife one day after that movie came out, I said to her, you know, like, do I complete you? And she looked at me and she said, what are you, an idiot? <laughs> you know, like, How could you possibly complete me? What a silly thing to say, right? But it's Hollywood, right? It's, it's, yeah, dramatic, yeah. it's romantic, all that kind of thing. But there's this, this point in that movie um, toward the end where Jerry Maguire, the main character, introduces us to his mentor. And, and I don't know if you recall this scene, but you're like all of a sudden in the mentor's office, it's like uh, old school desk with a name plaque on it. And there's this older guy sitting behind the desk with a uh, one of these old fashioned seersucker suits on with gray hair. And uh, and it says on the plaque, it says Dickie Fox. So his mentor's name is Dickie Fox. And <laughs> and Dickie says this, he goes, you know, in truth, I have failed as much as I've succeeded. But I, I love my wife and I love my life and I wish you 
my kind of success. This is what he says to Jerry. Mm -hmm. And that night when I was watching it and I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I was having trouble sleeping. As soon as I heard those words, it was like something like a lightning rod went through my whole body. And I had to, and I got, I, I knew I turned the TV off. I knew how the movie ended and I went right to bed. And I knew that night I was going to sleep fine. And I did, I slept so soundly. And when I woke up the next morning, I put my feet on the floor. I, I was sort of half expecting to feel that same little, little jolt of like anxiety. And instead, when my feet hit the floor, I inexplicably said four words out of like came out of my mouth. Like I couldn't even catch them because they just came out so fast. I just said, I love my life. I said, I mm. love my life. And and that was that moment right there. You talk about getting it right in the moment. My thinking in that moment was, was I am grateful for my life. Mm. I am I am in gratitude for my life right now, even though my life isn't perfect and and I have things I'm working on and I'm struggling here and 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 and, and I felt alone really because I as a lawyer I couldn't tell anybody this stuff like I couldn't make myself vulnerable with my partners or with my adversaries or yeah. a judge right that was so. But I got that moment right. And those, those four words became like a buoy for me to hold on to whenever I got caught up in, in fear, doubt, or worry, like the rip current of fear, doubt, or worry. And I ultimately did a TED Talk on this very topic. Like a couple of years later, I wrote this book, Pivot, and I did a TED Talk about those four simple words. But it's what we were talking about. It's like there's a, a way that you can get leverage over yourself in the moment to, to get the moment right. And for me at the, on, on that particular day and every day for the last 12 years, virtually, um, my day starts exactly the same. I put my feet on the floor and I declare out loud. I love my life. I, and I, I feel this gratitude, you know, for, for being, yeah. and that's, mm. so you think about the times in our lives and we're just so caught up in, in, in whatever the shit is, you know, whatever the daily, you know, grind thing is that stressful moment It's like, what's the, and this is what I ask people when I, I deliver a keynote talk. Sometimes I'll, I'll ask the audience, you know, what's the thing that you go to in that moment? What's your, what's your buoy? And I was a lot, I was a lifeguard for uh, many years. That's why this, on this book cover, you see this, this buoy here. You know, I, I start with this story about how we, we, we ended up losing somebody my very first year at 19 years old, we lost somebody at the beach, but it's like, what's the thing that you go to that's your lifesaver, that's your life preserver? Yeah, yeah. You know, to get to get the moment right, to get your thinking right in the moment. Because if you can't do that, if you can't, if you don't have that level of, of presence, um, then so many things can go sideways in your life. And, and people see that all the time, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, you just absolutely. are that, and that's the area when we talk about uncertainty and a lack of control, guys, that's the area we have one, 100% mm -hmm. control over. We just mm -hmm. don't, you, we're not often utilizing or practicing techniques and ri creating rituals around how it is that we get it right in the moment. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Fonzie, I'm going to share a quick story before I know that you're like ready. You have like four, four questions. Uh, wait, 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 before you share that story. It's a quick, it's, it's quick. It's quick. <laughs> uh, I love the, I love my life. Mm. Um, I had this kind of like whiteboard in my room. I used to have it. I don't have it anymore. And it was right in front of my bed. And as the first thing I, ha I have written in there was today is a good day for a great day. Right. And that's how I would wake up and I read it a lot. And then I feel like eventually I tune out of my surroundings because I see it so much. And I just started like getting up and go out with my data. And the, I could tell there was a difference in my day when I would read that and I wouldn't read that. Right. Mm -hmm. And lately, uh, something I've been so I go and work in the coffee shops in the morning. I live in a studio apartment with my girlfriend. So as soon as I wake up, I cannot do much in the studio apartment because I'm gonna wake her up, right? So I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta get, I gotta get out of here. And I go to a coffee shop, you know, 6:30 in the morning. And lately I've been playing this song in my car that is called It Feels Good to Be Me, right? And it's like this hypey song. It's a good beat, but it's just like screaming out loud, like, feels good to be me. And I'm just like driving and listening to that, you know. And, I, I get into the same thing and it's like, wow, like I do have a lot of challenges in my life. I, I, I accept it, but still like I'm grateful to have these challenges, yeah. right? Like 
it's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to, you know, learn. It's an opportunity to maybe pass on some of the lessons to somebody else. So I, it's, it's so key starting your day with gratitude. And a lot of people talk about it, you know, in the journal and stuff. I do think people need to find their way to do it. I don't think there's just one way to start your day with gratitude and with that mindset. Uh, you know, if, if your way to do it is a sticky note on your mirror in the bathroom and then reading it out loud, awesome. If your way is, you know, saying I love my life as soon as I wake up, I think that is great. Or maybe if your way is singing in the car, think it feels good to be me. I think that's a, that's a good way too, right? Yeah. But yeah. I think everybody has to maybe discover what is that one way that they can start the day with gratitude and prime that mindset so they can, you know, yeah crush your day. I think a great way to start is uh, by going and, and reading Change Proof. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> yes, uh, pre -order just going to put that out there. So we're going to leave the links right below just so you know. But the, the quick story is like this happened like a couple days ago, right? I'm on, on the phone with, with my family and I'm telling the story and my mom is cracking up. She's laughing like crazy, right? And uh, it was like this morning, uh, those morning that kind of start, you, you feel behind, right? You're like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, I woke up like 10, 15 minutes and you're like in this constant rush to try to to get to work, right? So I have a two-year-old. He's about to be three. And uh, he discovered that he can lock the door of his room, right? So, you know, Fonzie, we had a we had a team call with with our entire team where it was like, was it the December 31st? No, it was like two days. It was like the it last was call of the year. And we're going to be, we're going to express gratitude. And we're just going to, we had all this thing prepared, right? So Fonzie's like, hey, I'm messaging me on Slack. Where are you, man? Like, I, I, I'm about to send the link. And I'm running up the stairs trying to like get Luca ready. And as soon as I try to hit the door, like, is completely locked, right? And I just hear Luca just run from the door to his bed. And obviously, like, we cannot communicate very well. He's like, he's two, right? So I'm like, hey, Luca, baby lock, baby lock. And he's like, no, big lock. And then he'll like, just hit the door. And it was one of those doors that you have to, like, put this, like, pin inside of, like, the, the, the lock. And I couldn't find the pin in any of the doors of the house. So I'm like, I had to, like, almost unscrew the whole thing. And I was running late for this call. And I also had to be in this uh, location, fitness studio location that we're helping. And I was an hour late. It, it, yeah. it was like, it, it's this situation where mentally you're like, oh my, like, I, 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 I felt, you know, I, that like I didn't have control over the, this whole thing, right? So I finally opened the door 30 minutes later, grabbed Luca. He's fine. He's laughing, right? Like change him, take him to my in-laws. When I drop him off in my in-laws, he starts having this massive tantrum for some reason, probably projecting the energy that I was projecting into him, right? Mm. For this whole situation. So he goes to the floor, starts crying. My father-in-law is there. My mother-in-law is there. I, I feel so ashamed that I have to drop him off in that state, right? I feel so bad. And then I'm like, hey, I'm late. And then I jump in the car and they're wonderful, right? So they take Luca. They soon take another picture and he's happy laughing, having breakfast, right? So I jump in the car and I legit just like park for a second. And I'm like, mm. let me pause. Mm. Let me take a deep breath. And let me start thinking about what am I grateful for? Right. I'm like, I'm grateful for that. I have my car back, that I have my wonderful in-laws that are taking care of Luca for the entire day, that I have an incredible team that are going through the call right now without me happy, being thankful. I am, I am healthy. My wife is healthy. We are good. And I started naming all these things that I'm grateful for. And let me tell you, Adam, like the, that one exercise. And I think it was the first time in that year that I consciously did that. Because there's been situation and then because of the speed of the day or whatever, like we, we don't really do it. But it was like that one day after that and everything from that day on until today. Uh, it's been a few days. I started feeling this incredible positive momentum, right? And it was the decision that we made in that I made in that moment. Like going back to what you were saying earlier. And it's like, wow, it removed the entire and everything was okay, right? I got to the location a little bit late, but it was okay, right? We jumped on the call with the team. It was okay, right? Mm -hmm. And and it was such a powerful moment. So I really wanted to share that because I relate so much with what you're saying. And going back to that point, it's like the decision that we make in that moment. So I hopefully I, I I hope that story serves anybody that that's listening. You know, uh, because it did it did serve me. And it, it, it you know at the end of the day it was a very funny story at the end of the day. So <laughs> it's like you read the book already, Louise, because uh, the model in this book, this new book, is is uh, is a really uh, simple one on some level, but you have to see where to apply it. And so I'll, I'll briefly just say. 
there's three things in it. It's pause, which is what you talked about, ask and choose. Mm. And so just in the context of what you were dealing with that morning and God, as a parent of four and having four little ones at, at a point in time, I know, I know what that's like. Um, you know, the capacity to pause is a big deal. And, mm-hmm. and especially in the midst of chaos, and especially in the midst of anything emotional or uh, where there's fear that's present, et cetera, the, the ability to pause is phenomenally important. It is a, an opportunity for us to reset. It's an opportunity for our minds to recalibrate. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes a pause can be as simple as taking a breath, of course, and a breath is so powerfully important. And in coordination with closing your eyes, again, another one of, one of these things that people – it's a, a tool that's at their disposal, but they don't use it. So close your eyes and take a deep breath, a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth and do that two or three times. And you've paused, you've gotten to a place of neutralness where, mm-hmm. where it's not, you know, there's not, not a positive or a negative charge. You're just sort of in the moment and present so that you can do something that is fundamentally important uh, to anything that you, you're, you're working on, anything that you're engaged in. And that is to ask questions. So in that moment that you pause, you can ask, you know, what's, what's going to serve my child right in this moment, my son, Mm -hmm. what's going to serve me, what's going to serve the people who might be waiting for me to show up and be at my best, you know, whenever, you know, a half hour from now. So these kind of questions and often questions are are something that people don't give themselves the luxury to ask. You don't think I don't have time to ask a question, especially if I, if you don't know the answer. Um, but I often, I, I feel like questions are so important because you cannot, and this is again, philosophy here. You don't, you can't ask a question and not get an answer. It's cause and yeah. effect. They're, mm-hmm. they're, the relationship between those two things is, is so, uh, it's causation. It's not, not cause it's not, uh, it's not correlation. It's not correlative. It's, it's about causation. So you ask something, you will receive an answer. I don't know when the time, you know, timing is the thing, right? Don't always you ask a big question, a question you don't know the answer to, you may not get an answer immediately. Yeah. Uh, but, but I find that the more you get into that pause and ask, uh, modality, the, yeah. the, the more quickly you do get answers and those answers are intuitive. Like yes. your body just tells you what to do in the moment because you're asking it. Absolutely. And then, and then the choosing becomes a natural thing. And then we can talk about resilience uh, as well in that respect, because often if we're under stress, our, our choice, so often we think we have to act mm-hmm. and that that's what we want to do first is to change something, make something different, make it go away or, or, or whatever it might be. We want to manipulate even. Um, but the choice right there is, is, from my standpoint, two things. We can act if we've asked, we paused, we've asked, and now we're ready to act. You can act the way you did. You took action in that moment. The other thing that we can do is recover because when we think about what resilience is and what it's not for so many people, because we have a, an assessment tool. It's called the, it's a proprietary tool called the resilience rank assessment. Mm-hmm. Resiliencerank.com is this website um, where people can take that assessment for free. And there's nothing, we're not selling anything. There's no, um, it's just a gift uh, for people to figure out how resilient they are, wherever they, in their personal lives and their professional lives, et cetera. And so we've got 3000 business leaders that have taken this more than 3000 uh, from organizations globally, Uh, Fortune 50 to start up, you know, a a great diversity of folks who've taken this assessment. And and what's really important is that we we recognize that resilience is not about how we endure the stress in our lives. It's not about it's not about even bouncing back, as so many people think. Becoming change proof is about bouncing forward. It's about learning Mm -hmm. from the future. Mm -hmm. It's about learning how to create a net positive experience in the moment, get the moment right, be net positive uh, to, to, to the unknown or to the uncertain even, because that enables you then to make better choices. But sometimes when we're, when we're so just overloaded with so many people feel this, the anxiety and their exhaustion and their burnout, even from what they've been up to, we have to recover. That's what resilience ultimately is. It's that it's a toggling back and forth and we our toggle technique that we share in this book is about how you go from exertion and energy uh, yeah focus etc to recovery to rest to resetting to recharging to regenerating ourselves so that we are then able to be 
to be what we we are capable of being in the moment, moment to moment. Mm, so absolutely. Resilience wow. is really ultimately the uh, the thing that's produced by this this uh, like a light switch toggling back and forth between intense uh, energy production and, and focus and and rest and and resetting and recharging our batteries, which we must do in order to be able to continue forward. Absolutely. Mm. Wow, this is amazing. I have a few questions that arise from this last part right here, but I think we should do a part two eventually. <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Maybe maybe after we, we read the book, you know, that is coming out in, in February, is it? Yeah, the, the two, get get this, two, 22, 22. How about that, Fonzie? Beautiful. It's <laughs> easy to remember, two, easy 22, remember. 22. Yeah, that's right. Two, We're gonna, two, 22. Hey, can you post that link? Um, Adam, where can they find the book? Is it in your website? They can find it. Sure. You can go to changeproof.com or adammarkel.com or you can go to Amazon too. You know, you can pre-order the book now. It's going to be only, uh, just about a month from now. It'll be in the stores, which is, which is really cool. So yeah, exciting. that is very so. exciting. Uh, before we go to the last couple of questions, I just want to kind of like make a little remark here on what you talk about pass, pause, ask, and choose. I think that framework is incredible. Uh, we've heard it a few times. The quality of your life is dictated by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. And guess what? When we are under a negative feeling, under the influence of a negative feeling, negative emotions, we're probably not going to be asking the right questions, right? So that pause right there, I think it is vital. It is honestly I didn't put one on one together until you were explaining it to me right now, right? Like I, I've heard about the importance of pausing and like setting up intentions. And I heard about questions, you know, asking the right questions. But now I'm seeing the value of, hey, first I have the choice of acting upon my emotions or making that pause, right? So I'm going to decide to take a pause, take a deep breath, go into that space that you said of neutralness, and then... I'm going to look for the right question to ask myself so I can make the right choices. I think that is so, so important. And I just wanted to kind of like reiterate it because I want the, you know, the listener to just honestly write it down. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just write it down. It's just so, so important. Yeah. But if you want the full framework and you know, even more, just go and get the book. Look at that. Yeah, let's go. Adam was ready too. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. We are analog people right here. Um, but yeah, Adam, terrible. we're here getting close to the end and we have a, a few quick questions that we ask every single time. Just two. Just yeah, two just questions. two. First of all is what is an action point for, you know, that person that is listening today and that they might be in that space where they're waking up and they feel the weight of the world on top of them as they put their feet on the ground. What is an action point that they can do so they can start feeling better? I think the simplest thing that anybody can do to, to sort of change that is what, is, is what I tried, uh, started to do, which is to take that beat, take that pause at the beginning of the day and ask yourself the question, how do I want to experience myself in this moment? That's it. How do I want to experience myself in this moment? Because if all you have to do ever is get this moment right, it, it's just not a high hurdle to, to take. It really yeah. isn't. And, um, and I like to keep things and chunk things down to the simplest step, to that little first baby step or that domino that we started, because that's how momentum gets created, just sort of one, one domino at a time. Yeah. Absolutely. Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So there we go. <laughs> uh, and the last question, Adam, is where would you be if you didn't publish, if you didn't put your message out into the world? Well, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I, I feel like personally, I, I would be, um, I would, I would be playing, playing, my life in a different way. And, um, you know, I'm hesitant to sort of say playing small, but you know, it takes, it takes a certain, um, both a certain humility and a certain audacity to put yourself out there. And, and I'm a big believer in humility. So it, it's tough for me sometimes 
wanting to maintain humility and being a bit of an introvert anyway, to put myself out in public with things um, the way I, I have chosen to do. Um, but I feel like that's, that's just part of the riddle of life. I mean, Absolutely. I, you know, it, I know, I know it's what's, it's how I connect with other people and I know it's how we all connect with each other. And I don't believe there's anybody. So to, to just tune into the shirt that you're wearing Fonzie, you know, it's, we all have a story to tell and, and so many people don't believe their story matters or their story mm -hmm. would be important to others. And that's yeah. just, I mean, you couldn't, couldn't think of anything that's less true than that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we asked this question for to inspire and motivate, right? The person on the other side that might be thinking, should I share my message? Should I put myself out there, right? Uh, and secondly, to honestly, to motivate us and inspire us to keep publishing and sharing our message and having these conversations. Yeah. Adam, where, uh, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you if they want to learn more about what you guys do, what your company does, all your products, amazing resources? Beautiful. I mean, we have it consolidated. It's nice. You just have to go to one place, really. AdamMarkel.com, A-D-A-M-M-A-R-K-E-L.com. And, and right there, right below the fold on the first page, you'll find a link uh, as well to that resilience assessment. You can go to resiliencerank.com to take the assessment um, as, as our gift, but you can also get it off the website. And uh, a lot of the work that we do these days is really speaking to leadership groups. So we do quite a bit of keynoting. We also uh, train other people to do that work in the world as well, whether it's keynote or, or give Ted talks and, uh, and we're researchers. So we're constantly looking for mm -hmm. people that, that are helping uh, us to learn more about resilience and what that, what that, uh, has looked like for folks as well as how it is that we create greater levels of resilience going forward. Because as I know, my own name is Adam. I know this is not the last uh, the last time we will be challenged or even the greatest disruption or the greatest uncertainty that we'll face in our lives. I feel like yeah. that's, that's just not what's in the, in the cards. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really about how do we, how do we embrace that? That's what this brand mm -hmm. new book change proof is all about. It's like, how do you actually embrace change in a way that makes it again, that you see change as net positive and, yeah. and, you know, a, a, a net blessing in your life so that, mm -hmm. that you can actually use it, utilize it as opposed to pushing it away or resisting it yeah. or, or being in fear of it even. Absolutely. I, I want to encourage everybody go check out the links. Uh, they're going to be like right below. You got to do is scroll down on the podcast episode and click every single one of them. <laughs> uh, you're not going to regret it. It's going to be so awesome. Adam, thank you so much. It was an incredible experience. It was a really fun conversation for yes. us. I hope it was for you as well. Is there, is there anything else that, uh, that you want to share before we head out? No, no. I, you know, my hope is always that people, that uh, that you will you wake up tomorrow. That it's not a guarantee that we woke up today. It was not nobody had a contract. I've yet to meet anybody. I was a lawyer for a lot of years. I've never seen anybody had a contract when they went to bed the night before. They were going to get to wake up the next morning. So you know, tomorrow when you get to wake up, and that is my prayer that everybody that's watching this, listening to this, you get to wake up again tomorrow, and you get to put your feet on the floor or or at least open your eyes and start your day. Those first thoughts of the day, those first getting, you know, those first moments of the day, you have a choice as to how you want to experience them. And this may be kind of motivational or whatever it is, but, you know, decide in that moment how it is you want to experience yourself because it, it cascades. It becomes, it is, as my grandmother used to say, starting the day on the right foot. So what do you want to say out loud? What do you want to say to yourself yeah. in that moment when you realize I've been given the gift of another day? Yeah. That's the wow. question. Thank you. Fonzie, anything per else? Perception, <laughs> action, and will. That's all I'm going to say right there. I think that is absolutely <laughs> amazing. Adam, yeah. I think you are a modern stoic philosopher. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Right that's on. awesome right with on. that said guys thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast go ahead and follow the show on your favorite platform and on social media at this bros go that is right and if Adam here help you move one step forward closer to your goal please don't forget to share this episode and and leave a five star review see ya thank you guys